Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're still with me. We're going to uh, continue our review of the syllabus. I want to talk about the assignments for the course. You will see some further information about the assignments when you go to the tab up here called Assignments. You'll get a little bit more information there, but this may be enough to get you started. Your first assignment for the class is to write your reading autobiography. You're going to talk to me about your memories of learning to read, um, books that you read, authors that you loved, genres that appealed to you, people who were important in your reading life. And it's your description, and, and you can include both positive and negative, uh, certainly, memories about this. Was there a special person, a special place you like to read? I'm trying to ask you lots of questions there to uh, make sure that you understand that this is to be a rather lengthy piece that you're writing for me. And I ask that you concentrate. Uh, we all tend to talk about our elementary. You know, I learned to read here. I loved these books when I was a kid. And then somehow or another, our secondary, our middle school and high school and college, uh, things get dropped out. But I'd like you to think about those as well. Did you have time? Did you do any reading? What do you read now as an adult? And also, what do you share with your kids? How do you demonstrate that you're excited about books and reading and try to kind of pass that along to them? You have different options here. You may certainly write this as a traditional essay. Um, I've done that. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, I did it when I took this course as a graduate student. But you can also use S'more. You can use Padlet. You can use PowerPoint. You may record a video. It's kind of up to you about what the final product might be. I've given you um, links to two different reading autobiographies. You see here, I've just clicked over to a different tab. So here's my reading autobiography in a Padlet, just to show you what one would look like. And Dr. Perry sketch noted her reading autobiography, and it looks a little bit like this. I know I'm kind of scanning through, but you'll be able to see it when you go online. So you could certainly do something like that as well. So you've got lots and lots and lots of ways that you can look at uh, getting this particular assignment done. It's worth 100 points. That's one fourth of the points for the, the class itself. So reading autobiography. The next thing you're gonna do, literally, the next thing you're gonna do are your textbook reflections. You're going to read, um, all of the chapters in your textbook. When you look at the table of contents for this book, uh, you'll see that, and I'm taking you to it just so you can see. I'll get you there in a minute, don't worry. You can see that even I sometimes have to do multiple kinds of ways to get there. When you go to it, you'll see all the different pieces here. There's a, an introduction, which you can read, and a welcome to the class, one for me, one for Dr. Perry. And then you'll start seeing your chapters. Chapter one, why do we share literature with children? Chapter two, divisions of young people's literature. You'll see different genres and formats as you go down here. You'll see awards, literary elements, um, a, a, a chapter on graphic novels, a couple links here, one to We Need Diverse Books. So there are 20 chapters in this particular textbook. And so what you will be doing, if I can get back to the right page, um, <laughs> uh, I think this is it, um, is taking a look at, um, no, that's not it. Here it is. Excuse me, folks. I even got myself confused which is why I left my tabs open so I could get back to what I needed to do. You're gonna be writing a reflection for each of those chapters, and you're gonna be turning them in in chunks, so just understand. Um, you're gonna be talking about what the content of each chapter is, and then you're gonna be doing a personal reflection. How will this affect you um, as you read and evaluate literature for this course? How might this help you as a teacher, as a librarian? Keep those kinds of things in mind. So, well, you can tell technic technicalities are just chasing me today. So here are the due dates. You're going to read chapters 1 through 5. They'll be due September 1st. Chapter 6 through 10, September 8th. Chapters 11 through 20, 
September 15th. So you'll turn them in in chunks and they'll be graded uh, in, in that particular manner. Your next section is blogging those 25 required books. Uh, it's fairly straightforward what you need to do there. Um, so just understand that, that that's um, what I expect to see when you're blogging. You'll blog books one through eight by September 29th, books nine through 16 by October 27th, books 17 through 25 by November 10th. So that should give you a, an idea of how you need to budget your time. The final assignment is the TK20 assignment. I've also gone over this before. So you can see it's worth 100 points. You cannot pass or, or get a good grade in the course without doing this. It's due November 25th. That's pretty much the end of the semester. There are 400 points for the class. If you want an A, you'll get 360 of those points. That gives you 40 points before you fall into the next category. So no emails, please, about, well, I just missed it by one point. No, you would have missed it by 41 points. So it's possible for you to lose points, still get a good grade. Note that policy now on getting C's. So you don't want to fall into that ter territory. But 360 and more is an A. 320 to 359 will give you a B. The rest of the syllabus has important policies and I recommend that you read them all very carefully. They're in here for definitely for a reason. One of the policies has to do with late work. And I'll just, uh, you know, tell you right now, I don't take late work. There's got to be something really pressing uh, for you to request to turn in assignment late. Uh, if you need to do that, you need to get in touch with me just as soon as you possibly can. If I do take late work, it's at my discretion whether or not I take a penalty. I don't take late work, just don't, at the end of the semester. And by the way, there's no extra credit in graduate school. So make sure these due dates get written down, get followed, uh, highlight them, set your alarms on your phone, whatever you need to do so that you know you have something due to me. That's, in a nutshell, the syllabus for this course. Again, if you have questions, call me, email me. I'll be happy to help you.